been on, haven't been live in a while, so I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about grief. Grief can either make you or break you. So what does that mean? So I had a patient come in not too long ago, and um, I was really good friends with uh, her and her husband. They've been a patient of me since I started my practice in 2013. Um, her husband passed away recently and she have been with her husband for over 50 years. Over 50 years, okay? And I was her husband's physician as well. And um, after he passed away, she came into my office and she says, Doc, I don't really know why I'm here. I don't know why I even showed up here. Every morning I wake up and I feel like there's no reason for me to wake up. There's not a reason for me to, to even get out of bed. The grief has been so strong that I can't imagine going my life without having him. And they've been together for 60 years. And she says, Doc, you know, my husband did everything for me. He made sure that our finances are met. He made sure <clears throat> that I am well fed. Um, he did the grocery shopping for me. He cooked for us. My husband did everything for me, she said. For 60 years, he did that. And she comes into my office and she's diabetic, so she needs some of her meds refilled. And I asked her, why are you taking your medication? Why do you even bother taking your medication? Why are you even in my office? Why, why did you show up? What is the reason for you to show up? And she said, I don't know. I don't know why I showed up. And I asked her, you, did you look forward to this appointment today with me? And she says, no, I did not. It's like, did you look forward to waking up today? And she says, no, I did not wake, look forward to waking up today. So, so why are you here? And she really thought about it. And she's a smart woman. She thought about it. And her answer is, well, well, because I'm supposed to. I'm like, well, okay, if you're supposed to be here, then I'm supposed to be prescribing you medicine. Then, then is that it? Do I just prescribe you medicine and you leave on your way? Because I don't, I don't really accept that. Because if you leave here, I don't know how you're going to be. If you leave here, I don't know what your emotional state's going to be. I don't know how, what motivation you have to keep going. And she says, you know what, you're right. You're right. My husband died. I don't know how to live my life. I don't know how to keep going like this. So, and, and I asked her, do you, you know, do you want to kill yourself? Do you ever think about suicide? She's like, no, 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 not like that. Because... You know, I still have my family who, who, who needs me. I was like, hold on a second. You have, you have a family who needs you? How many, how many sons or daughters do you have? Well, I have a, I have a son and a daughter and uh, an adopted child. I'm like, okay. How many grandchildren do you have? Nine. You have, so you have nine grandchildren. So you love your grandchildren? She says, yeah, I, I absolutely love my grandchildren. They're everything I have right now. But I'm not happy with them. I'm like, well, I, I, I don't know what you mean. Why aren't you happy with, with your grandchildren? And she said, I'm not happy with them because their life is still going on, even when he's gone. I said, okay, so the grandchildren, they're still going, going on, even when your husband's gone. And that really got to me, that really got me thinking, is that she really needed somebody to validate her grief. She really wanted someone to validate her grief and let her know that it's okay to grieve. And it's okay to feel bad right now. And that's what I told her. I told her, listen, I validate everything that you're, that you're saying. But you don't need my validation. You need your own validation. Understand that you have grandchildren that are still around. They're still healthy. They're still part of you. And their lives are supposed to go on with grandpa gone. Their lives are supposed to go on. Be happy about that. And she said, this is really hard to be happy when I'm the only one struggling and suffering. And I asked her, let me ask you something. Your children, your daughter, what does she do for you? And she said, oh, my daughter just annoys me. I was like, what, is, what, what do you mean she annoys you? My daughter annoys me. She wants to come over and cook and manage my finances and, and clean the house. I'm like, oh, so she wants to help you. She was like, no, 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 she just annoys me. I was like, so your daughter is helping you because she's worried about you. And she may be grieving just as much. But you're not validating her grief because you think that she's annoying you and that she's just intrusive in your life. 
And by you letting her help you, you also acknowledge that your husband's finally gone. And she looked at me, she's like, yeah, that's probably true. That's probably true. And having that conversation with her, um, you know, I, 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 I can't, I can't imagine how she feels. I haven't been through something like that. I haven't been with somebody for, for over 50 years and have them pass away. Um, I can't pretend to know what that means, but from my perspective, from a physician's perspective and me looking at her, there's no reason for me to just prescribe medicine and have her go on her way and not talk about this because if I just prescribe her medicine, she's gonna keep taking her medicine. Her blood sugar is gonna continue to be high. You know, she's continuing not, not gonna feel well. And so I thought to myself, well, we gotta do something, right? We gotta set some goals here. Everybody should set goals for themselves to accomplish, to make them feel a little better than themselves. And I, and I told her, hey, listen, why don't we set some goals for you? Why don't we um, do a few things for you to make yourself feel better instantaneously? So I taught her about using food as medicine. I taught her about eating the right things for her to actually feel better instantaneously rather than go on and eating everything that she wants and, and all this dessert and stuff like that to, to use as reward because that's what she was doing. She was using brownies and cookies and ice cream as reward, but she did not realize that it makes her feel really bad and her, and her blood sugar is in the 300s and she starts spiraling down. So I'm like, let's make a goal for you. This is how you're going to eat. And I gave her my, I gave her my, um, my diabetes eating plan and I've given it to her before, but I told her to use it now. And I gave her my eating plan, which can be found on my website, ronmd.com, R-U-A-N-M-D.com, uh, for free download. And, and I was like, I want you to follow this very specifically. And so the next day I followed up with her. And she says, Doc, you know, I was really mad at you for what you told me, but all that was true. And it really made me understand that he's now gone. I need to do stuff for myself. And so she, guess what? She stuck to the plan. And then uh, she followed up with me a week later on a plan. And her blood sugars went from uh, averaging in the 300s to averaging between 87 and 110 when she was fasting, right? I'm like, I'm like, see, this is what food can do. Can you imagine if everyone used food as medicine, how much less medicine people can take, you know? And uh, what I did for her was I like, listen, this is the plan. If your blood sugars continue to remain this way, you continue to eat this way, we're gonna get you off of your medications, all your, all your, all your diabetes medications, and that's what she started looking forward to, and that really empowered her. It really empowered her to make some changes in her life to start feeling better, once again. And so, this is a, this is a great uh, example of how people use grief. I shouldn't say use grief. How people go through grief, and they can either be really debilitated or they can use it. And they can say, hey, I can do better for myself and go on with it. And so I'm very happy to see her that she's so much happier. You know, I gave her a call not too long ago and uh, she is doing just fine. Thank God. But thanks for listening. If this inspires you, please share it to your page. I would love for you to share it. Uh, if this doesn't, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, thanks for listening. And I'll talk to you guys soon again.